This is Jay Krishnamurti's second discussion with students at Rishi Valley, 1979. I thought I was going to be a, how many how many that was going to accompany me. <laughs> I'm sure you're bursting with a lot of questions about hypocrisy. Before we go into that, do you know what religion is? The meaning of that word, not all the nonsense that goes on, all over the world in the name of religion, all the temples and all the priests, their rituals, all that is not religion. So first, if we can examine the word, the meaning of the word, it comes from Latin, religere, which means to bind. But I believe now they say etymologically that it means to consider, to attend, to meditate, to gather together diligently, giving all your attention to it. That's part of generally the meaning of the word. Similarly, Hypocrisy, the word, means to act on the stage, the root meaning. You understand? You are following this? The meaning of the word hypocrisy means, from Greek, Latin, and the meaning of that is to act on the stage, that is, to fail, to pretend, that you are somebody else. That's what happens on the stage. That is the root meaning of that word. Having understood that meaning, do you lead a life of, hip of hypocrisy? Come on, sir. You understand? Pretend to be other than what you actually are. I may pretend that because I am something or other, actually I may be something quite different from what I pretend. You understand? Do you understand what I'm talking about? Do you understand the English? It means to pretend, to feign, to act other than what you actually are. You got very excited the other day about eating meat, right? Apparently, Food is very important to you, and taste. You didn't give the same attention to anything else, right? When you mentioned food, you got terribly excited. Which means what? That you are a slave to taste, right? You're following this? What you like is more important than the consequences, the result of the, the dependent, the result of what happens. You may like meat, 
to eat meat, but you don't follow the sequence of it. You understand? Somebody kills the animals and you eat it. Right? Right? Why don't you talk about it? Now, is that right? If you kill the animal yourself, would you eat it? Go on, sir, you're, you all shouted the other day, would you eat it? If you had to go and kill that goat or that pig or that cow – oh, I forgot, you're all Hindus, you don't kill cows, do you? No, but you eat the cows. So, would you do it? If you had to do it yourself, you would. So, let's find out what hypocrisy means. That is, to pretend that which you are not, to fail, to assume, to put on a mask and say, I am the mask, as they do on a stage when they act. They pretend to be Hamlet. They pretend to be that which they are not in daily life. That is the real meaning of that word, right? To act on the stage, which means you are Sita, Rama or whatever they <laughs> Hamlet, any of your heroes you play. So, hypocrisy means that say one thing, do something quite the opposite, right? Go to the temple and do all that kind of a circus there and do something exactly opposite. Right? If that is understood very clearly, that as long as you are not expressing yourself, but pretending to be something else, you are a hypocrite. Right? Have you understood that? Are you? Do you say something and do the opposite? Come on, sirs, you're going to ask me a lot of questions, won't you? So what do you say? Huh? Sometimes, sometimes we are hypocrites. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes we are hypocrites. Other times we are not. Is that it? Yes. Huh? Yes. Do you know when you are a hypocrite? Yes. Why? Why are you then pretending to be something other than what you are? Why? Pressure of your parents, pressure from your society, pressure from your teachers, pressure by your friends. Hmm? Go on, sir, face it, look at it. Say, for instance, your father may want you to be an engineer because his family, his father or his grandfather, have been engineers. And you, the father tells you that you must be an engineer or a chemist or a 
architect, whatever it is, and you want to do something else, right? You want to be, I don't know, an artist, a mechanic. Now, in accepting the pressure of your parents, are you being a hypocrite? Go on, sir, tell me. Huh? Yes. Huh? Yes, sir. So what will you do? You have to tell them what you want to do. Huh? You have to tell them what you want to do. You tell them what you want to do. And will they allow you to do what you want to do? Then what will you do? Then do what you want to do and don't do what they want you to do. Then you will do what you want to do against their wishes. Is that it? If, if, it's, if it's something which you really want to do. I'm asking you, if you really want to do something, to be an expert horticulture culturalist, that is, expert in flowers, the trees, the rivers, the earth, the beauty of the land and all that, environmentalist. And your father wants you to become a lawyer. Will you, will you become a lawyer? Not because he wants to, but because he wants to. Not because I can't hear. Not because he wants you to. No. If you, have, you haven't understood my question. If your father wants you to be an engineer and you want to do something else, will you stand by what you want to do in spite of what your father says? Yes. Huh? Yes. Yes. You're saying yes? Will you? Sir, you talk. Go on, tell me. I will, I, will, I will stand for what I like to do, sir. What? I will stand for what I like to do. That means you will go against your father. That's right. Right? Will you? Yes, I will. <laughs> you are quite sure? I am quite sure, sir. Do you know what it means? It means breaking away from my father and giving a totally different side. Right. That means you may be poor, Right? Will you stand up for something you strongly feel against others who feel the opposite? Yes, I will. And not you only, but I'm asking all of you. Yes. You're all a sixteen, seventeen and eighteen. Will you stand up? Yes. Huh? Or be like monkeys following the same line? I know you don't like the word monkeys. <laughs> so, what is education? To educate, to cultivate, to encourage your capacity, your skill, you are endurance, so that you are a total human being, not just a mechanical <coughs> lawyer or a businessman, to have a good mind. What do you mean by a good mind, sir? Good. I'm glad you asked me. First let's look at the word good and mind. Shall we? The two words. What do you mean by good? What do you mean by good? That which you like? That which pleases you? What? You call that good? That's what we generally consider as good. Huh? 
No, I am asking you what not people generally consider, what do you consider to be good? Go on, you're all… don't look at me. What? You come over here. Something which isn't against the society. Something which is not against the society. Yeah. Wait a minute. He says something which is not against society. Right? Yeah. And you call that good? Yes. Society says go to war and kill people. Is that good? Well, under the circumstances. Um, good, good does good doesn't change according to the circumstances. Good is good. Whether it is good in India, good in Europe, good in America, or good in Russia or China, good is good. Yes, sir. Huh? Which means what? Society says, kill. Society says, doesn't matter what you are, hmm? you can be greedy, you can be vicious, you can be violent, but conform to the pattern. Yes, sir. So I'm asking you and all those gentlemen up there and girls who think they are seventeen, eighteen and very independent, what they consider to be good. Think, use your brains, find out. We are old friends. <laughs> I mustn't girl hold hands with a girl. <laughs> Now, what do you consider good? Sir, I, I think the dictionary meaning is right because I think it means something which is well put together, something which is in harmony with, with the surroundings. Now, do you know what the meaning of that word good means? Good. Yeah, well the put. Mean, <laughs> the meaning of the word, not what you think it is, but the meaning of the word itself, you don't. I do. Would will you go after the meeting, find out from a dictionary hmm, what that word means? Sir, I, I looked it up in a dictionary. Good. The, because I was interested in looking it up. Now, what does it say? Well, it it originally me meant. Well put together, fitting. Yeah, well put together, fitting, harmonious, uh, complete, whole. Right? Now, yeah. so good is that which is harmonious. Right? Now, are you good? No, don't look at her, I'm asking all of you. We don't know ourselves, sir. Huh? We don't know ourselves. You don't know about yourself. Therefore, you cannot answer that question. Yeah. Right. Right? Huh? 
I, I know I'm, I'm not good because I'm not totally clear about everything. No. Clarity is not necessarily to be harmonious. But, sir, if I, I'm... I listen, you haven't listened. You're already off on your own ideas. That is, you said, I am not clear, right? I said, I replied, clarity is not necessarily mean to be harmonious. I can see very clearly. Hmm? I can think somewhat clearly, but it may be not harmonious, right? Think it out. So, good means to be harmonious, to feel, to think and to be whole, not broken up. You understand? Rabbi, do you understand that? But uh, harmonious is what? I'm going to tell you. Harmonious, harmony doesn't mean with what? Being in oneself harmonious. So, so if, 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 if when, when, when being uh, harmonious, you're contradicting something. That's right. That doesn't, mean, that doesn't mean you're not good. No. If you live a life which is contradictory, right? Self deceptive, which is not consequential, logical, sane, then you are not good, you are not harmonious. Right? So their question was, this voice, was, I don't know myself, therefore I don't know how to be harmonious, right? Yes, sir. Right? Now, how will you find out about yourself? Please, this applies to all of you, the old, the young and the <coughs> who are those boys and girls who are playing. Sir, sir, what people talk about the nature that you about yourself. What? Would you speak a little slow? If somebody tells you you are a good person, the extra tells you about yourself, you never know yourself. No, lady, look, we were asking, this chap asked, you didn't listen. <laughs> this chap asked, I don't know myself, therefore I cannot be good or bad, harmonious or disharmed, right? So he said, I must know myself, right? Now, how am I to know myself? How are you to know about yourself? Come on, sir. Now, how will you look into yourself? By observing your actions and your thoughts. By observing your actions, right? And thoughts. And thoughts. Now, are you capable of observing it? No, 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 don't take it. Listen to what I have to say first. <laughs> I ask you a question. Are you capable of looking at yourself, your thought? I ask, sir, how will you know about yourself? To be conscious about yourself. Huh? To be conscious about yourself. Good Lord. To be conscious of yourself. Now, what does that mean? Think it out. Think it out. To be conscious of yourself. What does that mean? Which means to know 
how you are sitting, whether you are fidgety, whether you are not listening, what you are thinking, what you are feeling, to know, right? Yes, without any thoughts about it. No, that's right. To observe yourself in, the, in a mirror. You understand? Now, I'm going to explain, I'm going to explain. How can you observe yourself? You must have something to look at, right? So you can look at your actions and your thoughts. Huh? So you can look at your actions and your thoughts. Now, actions and thoughts. How do you look at them? You are thinking now, right? At least I hope you are thinking. Now, how do you look at your thinking? That's right. Now go careful now. You've said something. Look into it carefully. You remember after a thought has happened. Right? Right? That's what you said. You don't watch the thought as it is happening, but only after it has happened. Right? Right? Now, can you watch? thought as it is happening, not after it has happened. Slowly, did you listen to what I said? I said, can you watch your thinking as it is happening? You can't. you can't continue looking at it. Thinking. You can't continue thinking. Thought gets what? You can't continue thinking. The thought gets me. I'm asking you to look at your thinking as it is <coughs> happening. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm asking you a question, right? Do you listen to the question? And if you listen to the question, which is, can you observe, look, see the thought as it comes, thought as it arises, as it comes into focus? Sir, but there are so many thoughts coming to our mind, so how do we look at each thought? That's right. There are so many thoughts arising, how can you look at one thought? Right? Why do so many thoughts arise? Because you're conscious of it. Huh? Because you're conscious. What's happening? You're conscious. You, have, you didn't listen. I said, why do you have so many thoughts? All jumbling, you know? Because you're confused. That's why you have so many thoughts. What? Because you're confused. Because you're con. No. You're not. When you are listening to me, don't you have dozens of thoughts in your mind? Or only you are listening, therefore no thoughts. Is that so? No. Huh? No. No. I am asking, therefore, why do you have so many thoughts? Because our mind is steady. The girl says, we don't have a steady mind. That's not an answer. Huh? Huh? Without it, no. You are not answering my question. Huh? What's that? So many things to think about. So many things. No, you are not. You see, you are playing a game with me. I don't want to play your game. I want to find out why one has so many thoughts. Because of memory, sir? No. 
find out, so think it out. Don't just l- wait for somebody else to tell you, find out. Why you think about one thing, then the other, then another, then another? Why? Now, wait a minute. Do you play a game called association? Huh? Huh? <laughs> say, for instance, I say rose. What comes to your mind? Immediately. A flower. Huh? A flower. A flower. Then what? Then what? The next? What? When you? I said rose, flower. Then what? Oh, it comes something whether it's whether it's beautiful or it's red beautiful. or something. Well, <laughs> you're not playing the game. Okay. I mean, I said flower. Quick answer. What is the response? The moment you hear that word flower. <coughs> Huh? Colour. Colour. Then what's next? <coughs> huh? Smell. Go on. <laughs> You're not quick. So that is called playing a game of association, that is flower, thorn, scent, colour, grey. White, you follow, and then trace it back. Yes, sir. You got it. You can't miss it. Moment you play that game, which is one association after the other, it it makes your mind very quick. You're also. What's happened to all of you? You're all educated, are you? Huh? Oh, goodness. Somebody is scratching, somebody is yawning, somebody is. You are not learning, sirs. What is the matter with you? Oh, you don't see anything with your laughing. Ah, there is that chap. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me. Tell what was you going to say? We associate everything. The first thing which you, uh, the thing, the thought, the first thought, with the last thought, and then you come back to the first thought. And therefore, you're not able to concentrate on anything. You are, because the first thing you think about, the next, next, next. Now, I'll show you. I, did you hear what I said? Flower, thaw, smell. You're associating. You are associating. So, and backwards too. And you're not concentrating on anything. What? You're not concentrating on anything. No. You haven't. You are, I'm telling you how to play a game. <laughs> there is no need to concentrate. I, colour, rose, hmm? form, pain, doctor, right? Pill. And a pill, doctor, pain, thorn, colour, rose. You, you understand? See what happens to your mind. It's move, moving very quickly. Moves. You have to. Have you played another game, which is on a tray? Put a lot of things. A thing can tell. Wait, wait, wait. I am telling you. Stop. 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 I am telling you, <laughs> which is put. Take a tray, put on a thimble, a needle, uh, scissors, what, tomato, flour, this or that, and you are given ten seconds to look hmm? and repeat what you have seen exactly. Play that game. <laughs> you understand? So it makes you. Quick observation, remembrance, and repetition what you have seen. So that your your eyes 
and all your attention is on the on that tree, so that you are very attentive. Play that game sometimes with a lot of you. I doubt that anybody will be interested, sir. You doubt if anybody will be interested. Yes, sir. Why? They are dull. No, I'm not saying that. Sir. Why not? <laughs> they are interested in other games. Huh? They are interested in other games. Mm. They are interested in other games. <coughs> Cricket. Yes. Football. Basketball. Table tennis. Yes. Badminton. Now, when you play table tennis. Cricket, pay attention to what you're doing, and you play ever so much better. Right? Yes. All right. Now we'll start again. I ask you, what is good? I still maintain good is something which I like. Which I like. All right. You like to pull the butterfly's wings. Hmm? Suppose. Yes. Is that good? My opinion it is good. My what? opinion it is good. To hurt somebody. Are you being clever? No, sir. And if if you said that if I felt if I felt uh, no, pulling you said good is what I like. Now you you may like to hit me. Is that good? Huh? Perhaps not. Huh? Perhaps not. Uh, no. What do you mean? Perhaps not. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Not so good. look what you are all doing. You are doing. You are saying what I like is good. Which is the most harmless thing to say, because <clears throat> you don't see the consequence of it. I like to kill, therefore it's good. I like to eat meat, therefore it's good. I like to be violent, it is good. I like to be angry, it is good. You follow? So are all this good? Go on, sir. Exercise your mind, not your opinions. So good is not something relative. No, good is not relative. Yeah. So what if I what I think is good, if it's if it's not good uh, for somebody else, obviously it's not good. No. I mean, totally. It is not good to somebody else. Good is not relative. Mm. It is absolute. Right? Absolute means. Final, which is to be completely harmonious. Anything which is not in yourself harmonious is not good. Right? Now, are you? No. No. So, what will you do about it? I'm sorry to put you into a corner. Huh? Come on, sir, you're clever boys. So, good, we said, is to live. A goodness is a way of life in which there's complete harmony between what you say and what you do, what you think and what you do, right? Never contradiction. You know what I mean, contradiction? Be angry and say, Oh, I'm so sorry, I've been angry. Never to get angry. Never to be jealous. All, if you say goodness is to live a life of complete harmony, right? And you want to be good because that's the only way to live, right? Then anything that is 
not contributing to harmony in your life, it doesn't exist. Will you do it? I don't think so, sir. You don't think so? Why not? Hey, why not? You're all listening, you're all 18, 19, 17, tremendously independent. Come on, tell me. Does it mean that one who is good is sensitive? Yes. How can you be sensitive if you eat meat? Come on, says, somebody kills the animal and you eat it. Hmm? And you say, what? That's, there is nothing wrong. He is violent and you use his violence to satisfy yourself. Right? Is that good? So what will you do? Maybe I wouldn't like to kill it. I may not like to kill an animal and eat it, but I may be ready to have someone kill it and eat it. But there's one thing behind it, sir. If you if you take it this way, if you leave, if you leave them alive, they are going to eat the bo uh, least thing. You said the uh, all the animals and um, you should eat the least. Yes. And nearly all the animals they eat the least. Yeah. So if you if they are eating the least and you also eat the least, there won't be any of the least left for you. <laughs> you will make an awfully good lawyer. No, sir. It is, it is true, sir. The animal eats grass. Yes. So you eat the least harmful thing, like cabbage, carrots, potatoes, so the animal eats the carrot, so it is killing the least, and you eat the animal, and you are killing the least. But you just now said you should not eat the least. Huh? You said if you do not eat the least, I am taking a supposition on that, you do not eat the least, huh? then you are not killing the animals. So now, you are only killing the grass. No, you are killing only the least, that is all the grass, cabbages, carrots and all. And what so what are you trying to tell me? So if everybody, uh, you are eating the least, and so is the other animals. So are the other animals. So in that case, the, the least is getting finished very fast. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> How do you do it? How do you walk? Why would you grow the least? I would like to know. The animal. You know what the scientists are saying about this? A cow, you know, or a beef or whatever, they, occupies two or three acres. And the more there are these animals who are eating the land, the less for human beings. Therefore, they are trying to avoid, get rid of cows, not kill them. They say they are thinking about it. Do you understand? Because they are utilizing the earth unnecessarily. So they are saying cows, cattle may not be necessary, because this land is much more important for human beings. Yes, sir. Right. So, so we have to uh, kill them? No. <laughs> to get rid of them? You said to get rid no, of them. The easiest no, way to get, get rid no, of them is to Don't breed them, them anymore. You know what they are? Cattle in America, they occupy there are thousands and thousands of cattle being killed every day. Hmm? Uh, steaks and so on, and so on. And they are saying that these thousands of cattle are uh, eat, taking too much land, which could be used for the cultivation of wheat and so on. You understand? Now. You are asking, a, a cow eats grass, hmm? and you eat the least, harmful. So what is your next question from that?
next question is that both of you are taking the so land, you let, you will have to get rid of it yeah you will use up the land yeah therefore get, don't have cattle yeah yes that's why how would you do that i like to ask because sir don't i cannot answer you how to do that but i have been told people who have got thousands of cattle in america and in australia and various parts of the world they are now inquiring whether that land cannot be used for not cattle to be killed and eaten but for growing wheat because the population is increasing you need more that's all yes they they Does it mean I, that I I ask the question sir are those people who eat meat are they sensitive no you don't mean that sir people who eat meat are sensitive I show it to you I told you do you eat meat I sometimes eat meat are you sensitive I don't think I'm sensitive huh I don't think I'm sensitive He doesn't he think doesn't. he's sensitive but most of the time I don't eat meat Sometimes you eat meat. Why? There's no particular reason behind it. No particular reason behind it. No particular reason, but you like the taste of it. Yeah. Yeah. And have you followed, considered, when you eat meat, animals are killed? And is that to be sensitive? Will you kill an animal? no answer so to be sensitive means not to be harmful right not to injure others i mean how can a soldier who is preparing to kill somebody perhaps 10 years later how can he be sensitive he can no so if you are killing something will you be sensitive No, sir. No. no. So be honest, for God's sake. What? You are killing the animal to protect yourself. Are you being insensitive? Are you being attacked by an animal? If, when you are being attacked by an animal, find out. <laughs> that's enough for this morning so let's sit comfortably first be very comfortable are you comfortable yes. now wait me sit comfortably close your eyes and find out what you are thinking right right close your eyes find out what you are thinking and why you are thinking Right, sir.